In today's episode, I'm going to take you to an interview I did with Jack Rosenthal, a young, young teenage investor who I think you'll find extraordinarily interesting. So I'm going to give a little introduction here and then we're going to watch this interview and I think you'll be amazed and be inspired by Jack Rosenthal. So before we start this segment, I'd like to share with you that Jack Rosenthal is the founder of the Young Investors Club LLC and also the author of The Ultimate Guide to Teenage Investing. Jack is an amazing young man who was in his mid-teens when I interviewed him. I think you're going to find this interview nothing short of spectacular. This young man inspired me and I hope he inspires you. Okay, so I need to take a second here and pay homage to my um, sponsor for today's podcast. I would like for y'all to reach out and take a look at TaxFreeFuture.com. If you do not have a tax-deferred or tax-free self-directed retirement plan, then you have no idea the size of the tool you're missing in your tool belt. Please go to the TaxFreeFuture.com. Give a little bit of information, please, so that you can get on to the 37 little video vignettes that will show you all the incredible things you can do. It'll also explain to you why your financial advisors are not telling you about these plans and why you should be doing them. And when we tell you the reasons why they're not telling you, you'll understand perfectly. So go to taxfreefuture.com, please, and get those self-direct, take control of your own financial future and learn to invest your own money with what you think is correct. So there you go, taxfreefuture.com. All, All right. right. Uh, let's just start from the beginning. You have the story. I don't, you started at a very young age. So tell us how you got involved in being an entrepreneur at such a young age. Started my entrepreneurship journey at the age of six years old. I started selling paper airplanes basically basically online. And I was one of the first people to start doing that. The website currently has 60,000 hits as of now, because we were able to get the domain name Cool Paper Planes, which back then was it much easier to get. So nowadays there's still a lot of traffic that comes to that website. Um, but anyway, then continuing at the age of eight years old, I started doing peer to peer loans on sites like Prosper and Lending Club. So the basically the way that this worked, and I'm sure a lot of the real estate investors out there could appreciate this, maybe if they want to do it with their own children. My dad lent me $1,000 that I had to pay him back at a 1% interest rate, just like he was getting in the bank. So it was no different from, you know, whether you lent me the money or the money was staying in the bank. And then I would go re-lend out these loans on sites like Prosper and Lending Club, which is where you could basically do group funding of loans. So when someone wanted to borrow $25,000 to remodel their kitchen or whatever the case may be, we would, I would make a $25 loan to that person. And alongside with a thousand other people, we would all make that $25 loan to that person at a thousand at times a thousand. And then that would fund a $25,000 loan. And then we were paid like, let's say an eight to 9% interest rate on something like that. And then I as a year old investor at the time was able to keep that spread. It worked very successfully at thousand dollars. And then we did it again with $5,000, made even more spread. And that was kind of my first introduction into really lending money. At the age of 13 years old, I started what is now considered the largest key investment group in the country or one of the largest. There's no exact list. So I always call it the largest, but there's no exact list. I started the club my freshman year of high school. I started just kind of recruiting basically a whole bunch of kids from at first the local area. And then we started expanding to the East coast idea behind the club was, Hey, let's combine, you know, instead of me investing my thousand dollars in the stock market on my own, wouldn't it be so much better if I could invest that thousand dollars alongside 10 other kids and we could all learn from each other, learn from each other's investments and basically kind of talk about stock market investing together. And they also group together all our money in one portfolio. So I started the year, the first year, I think we had 20 members and around $20,000 in the investment account. Fast forward a couple more years after a lot of recruiting, a lot of expansion all across the East Coast, we have close to 100 members and over $115,000 under management in our portfolio for the Young Investors Club, LLC. So that's what I did in freshman year up until senior year. And then last year. So how did that work? How did what work? How did it work out for you? Of the running the Young Investors Club? The way that that sort of worked as a, it wasn't so much of a business venture. It was more of like kind of running, it was like running an organization, right? So like 
out of that, I wasn't given more of a fine. I wasn't so much given a financial reward from running that. I was more given a hundred other connections with other teenagers that all wanted to invest in the stock market. And I was given a lot of credibility because I was able to put together such a large group and with such a large amount of money for teenagers, which is to my knowledge, never been done before. So it was, so one, it gave me kind of an authority and two, it also gave me a lot of other connections with teenagers who will one day hopefully become future business partners. So, but then again, it gets to the point where you want to know about the money. You want to know about the rewards. When did I start making money? I mean, I was 50% expecting you to say it was to get a following or something other than money. I was yeah, yeah, exactly. No, it was, it was because the truth is, you know, running one of those investment clubs, I mean, even if I tried to monetize it, there wouldn't really be a lot of money there in the first place, try and take a management fee. But ultimately, that, I feel like that kind of degraded the integrity of the group. Like I kind of wanted to be in this just like everyone else and sort of make it an equal. Well, teenagers don't have a ton of money. You know what I mean? That's not where yeah. I would go. Yeah. Exactly. That's, that's not where you make the money. You don't make the money off managing other teenagers' money. Yeah. So by the way, I started this podcast. Not, I didn't want to make money when I started my podcast. I ended up making money from it from, because you kind of morph. So you see the opportunities and then you take advantage of them. So I was kind of figuring that's where you were leading to. So, Got it. Got it. Um, so anyway, finally, now the money part. So, you know, I had realized that although these things that I've achieved up until this point were impressive, you know, I hadn't been financially rewarded for some of my business accomplishments. Other ones I had been, but not kind of the levels that, you know, I really desire to. And although other teenagers weren't really being rewarded financially at the time. They were kind of more focused on school. I was, you know, always very interested in, you know, how can I go out there and make money? So last year, really at the end of junior year, after I had finished all my major exams for the year, you know, the SAT, very big, important test to take for college, junior grades, very important grades that colleges look at. So kind of at the end of that year, after I was finishing up what was really the end of my school career and what was really going to determine what kind of colleges I got into, after I was done with that, I said, okay, now it's time for me to focus on business and really come up with a vehicle and then execute on that vehicle of a way in which I could produce, you know, income for myself. So I'd like to take a little break right now in the middle of this interview and ask you if you find these kind of segments informative or informational, please hit that like button and that share button and let's let the world know that we exist. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe right now. So I started a social media marketing agency. Now I had tried to start a similar one of these around a year or so before with a partner. I'm not sure if you've ever had any experience with partners. However, my experience didn't turn out to be very positive. You know, it was me and a good friend of mine. And that was, that was your first problem. That, that was my, exactly. Don't go into business with my friends, which is something, believe it or not, my dad told me and I did not listen to him anyway. Just like some many kids out there don't listen to You can't go to business with, with your friends, but you need to pick a partner because of their acumen, you know, because of their experience. Because, and it's certainly if you're younger, you know, or take it a different direction. If you're great at finding deals, but you don't have money, then your partner should probably be a guy who has a lot of money or has access to money because you need a different piece of the puzzle than what you have, you know? Right, exactly. So that was the biggest thing. You know, the piece of the puzzle that we were providing was not, we weren't exactly so different. We were sort of like the same piece of the puzzle. So we didn't provide the same amount of value and we'd had to split it down like the half, which ultimately made it, you know, an unsuccessful partnership. And it also, you know, it's kind of hard to like be friends and then you don't know when you're friends and when you're partners. And it was kind of like, it was all, always running and we never had a time to take a break. But for numerous reasons, the business kind of ended up failing because of the partnership, not really because the business was such a bad idea. So a year later, I decided to try the business again. However, this time do it completely on my own, manage everything on my own, get clients on my own, maintain the business on my own, do everything, you know, by myself. And that's really started to see success. So at the end of 11th grade, I went out to go basically pitch clients. Now, let me get into what kind of social media marketing, what exactly is social media marketing and what exactly I was pitching. So I'm not sure if you're aware, but you know, recently there's been a whole kind of new industry that's emerged of social media marketing as opposed to traditional marketing. And mm -hmm. you know, obviously digital marketing has been around for a little while, but social media is even more recent than that. And basically there's a lot of 
other young entrepreneurs out there, you know, not much older than me, that are looking to help show businesses how they can use social media to ultimately generate more business and gain more attention on these platforms. So I kind of looked at that and I said, okay, I think that's something I could do. You know, I've been on social media all my life. I understand it. I definitely understand it way better than like a 50 year old business owner who's never been on social media a day in their life. But I said, let me go ahead and give this a try. So I just, my very first client that I got on my own was actually a restaurant. This is, I basically pitched the restaurant and said, Hey, listen, you pay me, you know, whatever it's anywhere from like 500 to 1500 a month. You pay me that much and I'm going to manage your social media pages. So the very first one, I started managing it on my own and then I started getting a couple more and then I started building out a team to, uh, to help me manage these pages. And then I had to hire a photographer to, to basically go in, take pictures of these different restaurants, of the different food being made. Then I have my content designer kind of execute all the content across the various social media platforms. And then me, the business owner, kind of manage all the business, keep everything together, get new clients and make sure that, you know, all the deals are working. So I've been doing that up until the call it, I don't know, May or so of last year up until now been running that business and yeah, it's been going quite successfully. So this is kind of the first monetary, the real monetary, like, you know, serious monetary success that I've had in the business world. As I said, I've been an entrepreneur all my life, but this has really been the first thing that, yeah, it's kind of been straight in, in uh, money, money form. All right, my friends, that concludes the interview with young Jack Rosenthal. I hope you found it inspiring. I would like to offer you a free hard copy of my book. If you're willing to pay $7 for shipping and handling, I will send you this book absolutely free. Also, I'm going to include an Owner Finance 101 training video that will be digitally downloaded to you the minute you get the link and give us your information. So just click on this link below or go to 1000houses.com forward slash free dash stuff. Scroll up and down the homepage there and when you see $7 book offer, click on that You'll get the hard copy of the book plus a digital training video that you can receive right away. All right, follow me to that next episode. We're out of here.